Good evening. Uh, we'll call this uh, school committee meeting of April 25th, 2013 to order. My name is Judson Pierce, chairing the school committee. Tonight, I'd like to uh, start out with, uh, respectfully, with a moment of silence um, for those who have tragically lost their lives and those many who were injured last week in Boston. Thank you. You'll see I'm wearing a hat. Um, and uh, I'll be wearing it all night. We have a special guest with us tonight to start out the evening. Um, first, I should say, uh, Ms. Heim uh, regretfully cannot be here with us tonight uh, due to some obligations at home. And uh, we believe Mr. Thielman and Mr. Schlickman are on their way. Hello, Mr. Schlickman. Hello. Um, I'll let uh, Dr. Chesson, if you wouldn't mind, introduce our guest. Sure. It's my pleasure to introduce our special guest tonight, Ben Shurston. Ben is a teacher at the Dallin Elementary School. He's also a key member of the uh, tech leader team across the district, which is made up of teachers from every single building, <coughs> elementary, middle, and high school. Um, ben has taken a real role in the leadership of the um, in, uh, putting in technology at the elementary schools. He actually has a uh, pilot classroom in which his students have one-to-one <coughs> uh, -one iPads. It's a third grade classroom and um, he's going to tell us a little bit tonight about what the work he's doing in his classroom. Do I need to use this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so to start off, I do, I have this one-to-one -one environment in my classroom, which has been great. Um, and a piece of this has been just trying to try a little bit of everything um, to try to get a sense of what works and what doesn't work so that we can really inform um, the new environment that we're going to have in Thompson next year. Um, so that's kind of part of where I'm, com where I'm coming from. Um, before I show you some of the stuff that my kids have been doing, um, I just want to say a little bit about sort of where, where I'm coming from, um, from the instructional lens. Um, the iPad for us is a tool, um, and it does some really neat things, and there are some things it does really well, and some things it doesn't necessarily do well, and that's okay. Um, it's not replacing all the things that we do. Um, so when I think about where I want to incorporate this into my teaching, um, I sort of ask myself three questions. Um, one of them is, is this going to allow me as a tool to do something that I've never done before? Uh, is it going to allow me to do something much more easily than I have been able to do before, or do something that was prohibitively difficult. Um, and it's gonna make something more fun, because that's an important piece of school as well. Um, so I just wanna run through and show you guys a few things that, that we've been doing, um, and tell you about that. Um, I jumped in with, uh, with, with, with typing and the writer's workshop, and when we came around to our second round of, of personal narratives, I gave the option to the kids, if you guys want to write in your notebooks um, with pencil, that's fine. If you want to do typing, that's fine too. Um, I've got some students, and we all do at third grade, that are just really slow writers. And I said, okay, well maybe, maybe the typing won't be any faster, but it might be more legible. It might, you know, maybe create something different for them. And, certain, and certainly revising typed work is very different from revising written work. Um, and so I gave them the option. And of my 24 kids, by the time we got through that piece, about a third of them had done the entire thing by hand, about a third of them did it entirely on the iPads, and about a third of them did a mishmash of both. And where it's really made the biggest difference is revising. Uh, when we go back to, to change things um, and add things, it's, it's really different when, when you're on a computer um, and, or on, on a digital device. Um, and for kids these days, it's a lot of erasing, it's a lot of cutting paper apart and piecing things together. And that final draft is very much another draft. Um, and you know, I tried as best I could with paper to, to limit the amount of copying over that kids were doing. But to some degree, it has to happen. Um, and it's been really interesting with the iPads that we get to that final draft and all of a sudden, we've done all of our editing and we've done all of our revising and that final draft is suddenly there. We don't have to rewrite it, it's mm. done. Um, and the kids love that. <laughs> um, so that. That last step of writing was always the most arduous if I have to copy this over one more time. Mm -hmm. and, and now that's not a piece of it anymore, um, which has been really neat um, for me and for them. And because we use a shared um, Evernote account, which is cloud-based, um, I can access all of their writing from anywhere. Um, so if I want to look at what they're doing or comment on it, um, I can do that from my device without having to track down their stuff or if I want to look at stuff at home, I don't have to bring home a stack of, of, of writing journals. I can pull up all their writing on my own device um, and look at it and see where they are. 
um, to sort of better inform instruction, or if I want to check in with the kid the next day, then I can sort of plan that meeting the night before while I'm at home without having to bring a bunch of stuff with me. Um, it's, it's changed the way that we do some of our research. Um, we don't do open Google searches in third grade. Um, we do, thanks to our PTO, have a subscription, subscription to something called NetTracker, um, which is a search engine that has been vetted by actual real humans um, and has a, an elementary appropriate section, a middle school appropriate section, a high school appropriate section. Um, and we're able to get on those with the iPads. And what's interesting is that we've done this research before and it's always been in the computer labs. And when you sit with a computer that is solid and kind of stuck somewhere, research becomes very isolating. And now that we have kids working in groups with their own devices that they can hold in their laps, they can say to the person next to them, hey, look at this really cool thing that I found. Which, is, which you can kind of do with a laptop, but it's a little more cumbersome than just to have something that's you know, the size and the weight of a notebook. And so there's this whole social piece um, that's, been, that's been emerging with the iPads that isn't possible at all with desktops and, and, and is difficult with laptops. Um, so it's really <coughs> interesting to see that, how that's changed. Um, we also used, when we were studying space, some uh, NASA has put together some really great apps with information. Um, and so we were able to do some app-specific research as well. Um, and again, that social piece came out where able, they were really more easily able to share with each other, each other the things that they were finding and this whole different level of engagement um, when you bring the social aspect into it, which was really neat. Um, this is actually going to start... When you strike a tone for computer sounds, why or how does that happen? When you... When you all right, I'm just going to do this the right way. Um, so one of the core apps that a lot of folks are using and a lot of folks love is called Explain Everything. Um, and really the best way to describe this is just in the name. It allows you to explain anything. Um, and so you have the audio recording that goes over it, and then students can pre-draw or draw in the moment anything on the screen at the same time. And it zips it together into this beautiful movie file. And they can go back and edit things. Um, and so at the end of my uh, unit on sound, um, rather than giving a quiz or something of that sort, what I said to kids was, here are two open-ended questions about sound that you should be able to answer. Go for it. Explain what you know to me um, using the Explain Everything app. And so this is what one of my students put together. So we'll see if you guys can hear this. First, when you strike a tuning fork, you hear sound. Why or how does that happen? When you, when you, when you, Hit the tuning fork, it vibrates, and then it, and then when you hit the tu this tuning fork, it vibrates, and then it hits this, the first layer of molecules, and they next one, the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, until it goes inside your ear, to your eardrum, so like, it'll sound like a flat piece of skin, and then that eardrum wiggles and sends signals to your brain, and then your brain turns that into sound. On a guitar, if you tighten the string, like this, like this one, it gets higher because it moves faster. If you loosen a string, like this one, it gets lower because it moves slower. So how do you change your pitch on a guitar is you loosen the string or tighten the string. Now you loosen or tighten the string if you turn this thing one way to have it tighten the string. And so we have this, this new way for kids to explain how, to explain to us what they know. Um, and it really sort of is like, we all wish that we had the time to sit with those kids one on one and can you take two minutes and explain to me what you know, rather than give a test or have them do a drawing. And this allows us to do that. Um, but not having to sort of sacrifice all of that class time. And if I spend three or four minutes with every kid, suddenly an hour and a half has gone by. And most of those kids spent that chunk of time not doing anything. Um, and this also allows them to, to go back and revise uh, and, and, and make it perfect, or as perfect as they want it to be. Or I can go back to them and say, hey, can you explain this part a little bit more? Um, and it really allows them to do a lot. And this app has come, has really exploded. It was actually put together um, the guy who came up with the idea is, is, is a teacher down in New York City um, and got together with some guys who, who code um, and they put this thing together and it sort of exploded now to the point where as you are explaining and doing your, your screencast, you can have a live um, web browser on the screen as well. So you can actually navigate through the web while talking about it, all being recorded at the same time, um, all on the same device and it's all right there in front of you. There are no cables to plug in and when you're done with it, you can just email it out and it's done. Um, notes, you know, looking for cables and trying to convert file types. Um, it's all there, which is
which is really great. Um, we made a lot of use out of, there's another core app that we've been using a lot called Book Creator, um, which is exactly that. Um, there's a piece of it that is just so, um, just simple with kids. Um, and so they select basically a, a, a book size um, and then they can add text to it, they can add pictures to it, um, they can add their own audio recordings over it if they want to. Um, this was actually really neat when I did it with, with kids. I had one group that decided to audio record their voices reading every single page. And I collected them all in, and some of them were not the quality that I wanted them, so I handed them back and said, okay, guys, like, this is, this is, this is my feedback, and you, you know, let's, let's change some things. And as soon as the other groups realized that one group of kids had done this, they all did it the second time around. <laughs> Um, so that you can go in and you can have this read to you by the kids. Uh, it's a standard EPUB format, so it opens up in iBooks and everything else. Um, it works across uh, non-Apple devices as well. Um, and we were able to actually put them all together into one book um, that's ready to go. I haven't sent it out yet, but it's ready to go out to parents. Um, and you know, rather than having those final projects be hung on the wall in a space where parents have to come in and see these things, we can now put them on public spaces or send them out over email so that so that you know, the, as we try to share what we're doing, we can do this beyond the walls of the school, which is really neat. Um, I'll go back. Um, the last three things that I want to say, I asked my kids in the last couple of days, I said, okay, I gotta go and, and give this presentation. Why do you guys like doing this? You know, what do you enjoy about having these in the room? And we talked for a few minutes about it, and a lot of things came up, and they kind of centered around three ideas. Um, one of them was that the iPads are mistake tolerant, which is the adult phrase that we use these days. Um, that it's easy to, to, to play around with stuff. It's easy for them to try something out if they don't like it to change it. I mean, if you think about what I mean, with pencils we can erase them, but you can only erase so many times before you have to start over again if you want it to look really nice. And iPads and digital devices allow us to make those changes really easily, and the kids really like that. They like the idea that they can change a color or change a font or move a picture around that if they don't like it, they can easily put it back. Um, it doesn't cost them huge amounts of time to do those experiments. Um, and it changes, it changes the way that they plan for these things too. Um, you know, kids are impulsive and sometimes that, I mean, they're, they should be, they're developmentally impulsive. And sometimes that can be, can be tricky for them. They want to try something and then it doesn't work and then it costs them time and, and energy and, and now we can just put it back. Um, and they know that and they appreciate that. The other thing that they talked about was this idea of gamification. Um, the idea of taking this, this inherent competitiveness that kids have, that people have. Um, I have to teach multiplication math facts in third grade. Mm -hmm. And it is boring. There's no way around it. I'm really glad that I do it, and I'm really glad that my kids learn it, and I'm glad that I learned it in third grade, but it's boring. Um, and my kids will say, now we have a couple of apps that allow them to practice these things. And they get high scores, and there's a timer, and they'll come to me and they'll say, I'm done with my work. Can I practice my math facts? which has never happened before, <laughs> <laughs> ever. Um, and that's really exciting that like, yeah, they want to do this. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's sinking into their heads, which is really neat. And then the last one was this idea of differentiation. And the kids are picking up on this too, that it's easier for them. And one of them actually said that it noticed that it was easier for me, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, that if I have different kids at different levels, which we all do in every classroom, that it's very easy to tailor what kids are doing to their needs um, with these devices. It's really easy to sort of ramp things up or bring them down if we need to. Um, and, and I noticed that certainly. It was really neat that one of my kids was able to point that out to me as well. Um, and so of all the things that they noticed, they seem to, to you know, come around those three categories, which are great because those are things that are important to me too. Um, and it was nice to hear that out of the, out of the mouths of my eight and nine-year-olds. Um, so that's what I had. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions? <laughs> Sir, Mr. Hannon? Do you have, when the, <clears throat> for the word, uh, word processing and stuff, yep. do the children have a keyboarding course or program? Um, we, we don't have one this year. Um, we have, in past years, done that through, the through our library technology program. Um, a couple years ago when we were cut down to a single phys ed, um, we had a more formal computer program uh, or a computer special that they went to every week. Uh, we don't have one now. I didn't um, know with, with all the technology if there isn't an app I'm, out there or something. I, I am sure they're out there. <laughs> um, and, and personally, um, I think it's an important skill for kids to have. 
Um, we played around with some of the Dragon Dictation software out there, and it's pretty good, but it's not perfect. Um, and where it gets tricky is that oftentimes those kids that have the, um, the fine motor difficulties are often kids that have like a lisp or a little bit of a speech thing, which is really tough with dictation software. Um, so it actually isn't, doesn't help the way that it would help for you or I as an adult speaker. Thank you. Ms. Starks? Um, what was your level of knowledge on the iPad before you started this? Do you feel, um, and did you need to get any training on this, or did you kind of learn as you went as well? And, and how, how much of a ramp up time do you see with any of this with the kids? Um, the first piece I owned, I had my personal iPad for about a year and a half um, before I started doing stuff with kids. Okay. Um, a lot of them have had some exposure at home. And what's really neat is to get into something and there will be those kids that will pick it up really well and they will automatically go and help out other kids doing it. Um, and oftentimes kids will come to me, I don't remember how to do this. Okay, can you find someone else who does? Because I'm sure that there are 10 kids in the room who know exactly how to do this. Um, and so a lot of that initial piece is training those kids to be independent, um, and, but then also getting them into the mindset of there are 20 other people in this room and if I don't remember how to do something, my teacher's not the only person that I can ask. Um, and if he's with somebody, there are lots of other resources in the room. Um, in terms of having to learn things, there were some apps that I was really familiar with. Um, Evernote is one that, the one that we use for writing is one that I live on personally. My entire personal life is in another Evernote account. <laughs> um, but I wasn't, other than that, I wasn't doing a whole lot with cloud storage. Um, things like Dropbox, um, which I learned how to use because I knew we needed it. Um, that that's sort of how we transfer stuff from device to device. And so I learned how to do that with the kids. And they picked it up really quickly. And within a couple of weeks, they were able to take a picture on one iPad, upload that to the cloud, and then pull it back down onto another device, yeah. which was great for me because they were able to do it on their own. And the more they can do, then the less I have to do and the more time I have with kids. Cool. Thanks. Thank I'm just you. wondering if you could reintroduce the speaker since Mr. Schlickman and Mr. Oh, Thierry. absolutely. Um, this is uh, Mr. Ben Churston. He's a third grade teacher at, at the yep. Dallin, and uh, as you can see, very, <laughs> very well versed in uh, the iPad. Um, any other questions by the committee? Dr. Bodie, Dr. Chasson? Uh, uh, no, I guess the last thing I want to say is on Tuesday evening, we had the pleasure of having an event, a kickoff event sponsored by the Arlington Educational Foundation, um, which has as its goal to try to accelerate the technology plan that we saw during the last school committee meeting. Um, and I would invite anyone who's listening at home to check out the Arlington Educational Foundation um, site, which also has information, has like a blog, and we have um, teachers that are actually posting, Ben, I, I know, has personally has posted out there and we have a number of other teachers that have posted on that site um, things that parents might want to read to consider about technology and technology for their children and technology and education. Well thank you very very much for joining us here and, and helping us understand a little bit about what you're doing every day with these kids. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah, I just have a yeah. quick question in terms of classroom management and yep. working with the kids. Do you have a display? Are you running through Apple TV? How much are you bringing stuff together uh, from kids and displaying it? And using um, we do have an Apple TV. Um, we have a dedicated ceiling mounted projector as well. Mm -hmm. um, so both my device and all the kids' devices are able to hook into that Apple TV as a way to share. Um, and with that, I've also been using, we, uh, we have a small um, document camera for um, physical stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually started in the last few weeks doing more with the camera on my device mm -hmm. uh, as a mobile document camera basically um, and mirroring uh, what's, what's being viewed for my, for my camera so rather than kids having to bring stuff up to the document camera I can bring my device as a document camera around the classroom. Oh, so the Elmo kind of camera you're not using as much? Not as much. Um, I use an IPVO, not an Elmo, yeah. um, which is a very different the pay mm -hmm. scale, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it, but, but for that, you know, just, you know, for kids explaining what they're doing in math, mm -hmm. rather than bringing it up, sometimes it's easier for me to walk around and I can, they can sit at their desk, mm -hmm. I can hold um, my iPad over what they're working on and they can explain it and it's up on the board. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Jeez. Cool. Thank awesome. you very, very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Before we move on tonight, I'd like to introduce our AEA rep, uh, Siobhan Foley. Thanks for being here. Uh, our student rep, um, 
Could you um, take the mic and maybe introduce yourself? And I'm Lucas. Lucas, senior at AHS. Um, oh, sir. I am Lucas. I'm a senior. <laughs> keep the mic over there because you're going to uh, play. Uh, we're going to figure you in prominently, I think, in this next uh, spot. Um, <laughs> so if, if, if I could ask uh, Miss Maya Gins to, to come up to the podium and discuss your town cleanup event. Should I say something? Yes, please. <clears throat> Hi. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we usually watch this on TV, so it's exciting to be here <laughs> live, <laughs> live on the stage. Um, so thank you for having me. I'm coming to you, um, my name is Maya Gins. I am, have been in Arlington for about 10 years. I have two children, uh, both at the Brackett School, um, grades one and, and, and three. Um, and over the last several years, I've developed a growing concern around litter in Arlington. Um, I think it's a beautiful town um, with a lot of beautiful open space, um, but as a runner in the town, I have been seeing a lot of litter, uh, especially over the last few years. I think, um, I think with the economy sort of, when the economy went down, I think they um, had to lay off some of the people in the town who helped keep the town clean. So, there, and the town has grown. So, um, I've been working um, with the town as well as with uh, a number of other concerned uh, m members of the Arlington community who happen to also be parents uh, in the Arlington schools, Dolan, Bishop, and, and Brackett. And we have been trying to think of ways to um, address this issue. Um, so we formed a group. We've, we're calling ourselves the Arlington Clean Team Act. And <clears throat> as our first project, we've, um, we are planning a townwide cleanup. Um, now, there are other cleanups that go on in the town, but they're very focused on specific areas. There's a bike path cleanup and a Robbins Farm cleanup. And our concept was more of a town-wide cleanup. Um, so it's going to take place on May 11th um, from 9 a.m. to noon. And the concept is, is that we will be meeting at the parking lot on Mystic where the farmer's market is held. Um, and I'll be there and other members of, of ACT will be there. Um, and we will be giving out garbage bags and we'll have a list of suggested areas in the town. But it's really for people who come to decide the areas that they're concerned about. Maybe they walk their dog in an area every morning that's littered and they want to use this as an, as an opportunity to go clean up that specific area. And then we're just asking that people return the bags of garbage to um, either the meeting spot at um, where the farmer's market parking lot is or at the DPW who happens to be having a um, trash collection day there as well for uh, TVs, etc. So, <coughs> So our challenge, of course, is everyone's busy, especially this time of year with sports. Um, so our challenge is getting people involved and getting people to show up. I look at this as not just an opportunity to clean up the town, but also just as an as a effort to raise awareness about this issue. I think, um, again, the town is growing. Uh, there's a lot of people doing a lot of different activities, and unfortunately, sometimes this results in an abundance of litter um, in certain areas of town. So I'd like to start raising awareness, and I think um, my reason for coming to the school committee is because I think that the children of Arlington are a great place to start, <laughs> so we can all develop good habits early. Um, so I'm coming to you to ask, uh, I guess, for your support and your ideas about how maybe we could get um, the students in the Arlington Public School System involved in this event and just overall, you know, involved in keeping the town clean and beautiful. So that's my my spiel, as Judd said. Um, so I have a few handouts with the specifics, um, but I, you know, certainly if anyone has any questions for me or or ideas, I would welcome them wholeheartedly. So. Well, let me just begin by thanking you for coming. One of the reasons why I wanted you here uh, speaking tonight was because you presented at town meeting, you presented at the Board of Selectmen yeah. um, very eloquently. I mean, you are firsthand witness to what <laughs> isn't something that I think our town would like to see. Yeah. Um, and the Board of Selectmen in their meeting, I believe it was last month or perhaps two months ago, suggested that she come and speak with the school committee uh, about what we could do uh, to foster awareness. 
and I've spoken with Dr. Bodie as well um, to see if there's any sort of um, opportunities, and I'd love to get your, your take on this too, um, to, get, to get the word out and, and get people to, to be a little bit more cognizant. Um, do, you have, do you have any opportunities to maybe speak with, with some of your fellow students between now and May 11th about this event and see what we could do to drum up some support for? Not that many things in terms of like the entire student body ever being together in one place that never happens. <laughs> I think the one thing we do do is like get flyers out through like through the principal emails out to homeroom teachers and homeroom teachers tell students or like some like gives uh, teachers packets. It's mainly in homeroom. Mm -hmm. For each student's homeroom, they can receive information. Okay. And there's also the daily announcements every morning. Okay. So I think word can spread through that, and we can also just try to like. Even have like a table in the cafeteria is a common thing for people to spread awareness because people come and talk in the cafeteria. So I think those are the best ways that I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. I think we can get something out of that. Okay, that sounds like great. a group plan. Perhaps you know maybe make it a meeting if 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 you can with the with the Mary Villan and the principal of the high school and and talk with Mary about setting up that table in the cafe or doing that announcement over the over the homeroom. Yeah, like whoever's interested in it maybe like can meet in a certain room at a time and like those people could be like the proponents. Like if there's like a certain group of kids that are interested in like really leading the, <laughs> really like leading the group then it's like they can get their friends and that's usually how things also spread. Is there a high school sort of environmental uh, club or something that um, might yeah, want to take a, some? I'm actually a yeah, part of it. It's, it's saves Students Against Violating the Environment. Oh, I'm sure actually wow. I probably could talk to them like yeah. talk to the president of the club and try to get something out. There's also like an agriculture club and a social justice club, which is kind of like they try to learn about like um, environmental justice as well. Okay. So there's those three clubs, I think, that okay. we talk to them too. Yeah, that would be very helpful. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. That would be great. Thank mm -hmm. you, Luke. I appreciate that. Yeah. Do the members have any questions for Maya? Um, yeah. Well, the timing of this could be very good for seniors because there's often a, a rush at the end to finish up hours of community service. Um, Arlington Public Schools has a 40-hour community service requirement over the course of the four years. Um, not that they were just trying to fulfill their community hours, Course but not. at the same time, <laughs> it's a great way to, to accomplish both. Okay. So going through the different clubs would be very helpful, but I would also um, make sure, we can make sure the guidance knows this because often uh, those activities are organized through the guidance department. Okay. Uh, we can also, if you give me the flyer, uh, make sure that all of the PTOs, so you may have already done that, uh, are aware of this. I, I think we have the PTO covered, but I'm happy to give you the flyer because okay. I cannot hear things enough, right? <laughs> so that would be wonderful. Thank you. And I, I think that uh, you would also have some success at Audison, so I certainly can pass that on to the, to the principal of Audison and uh, let that be known up there as oh, well. I would be very appreciative. Thank you so much. Welcome. So can I leave this? Uh, yes, please. On the table, yes. Thank you so much, Maya. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Thank really you very much. It. And uh, if any of you would like to come out and join, <laughs> we will be I'll there. Be there. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave these flyers here and I'm going to um, try and get in touch with your crew over at the high school. Okay, thank you. Have a nice evening, everybody. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. We're right on time. Um, <clears throat> the Human Rights Commission appointment. We have two vacancies um, that we need to appoint as a school committee. Um, <clears throat> two folks have come uh, our way. Uh, one has um, just come in this afternoon by way of resume and letter of intent, and um, with, uh, with your permission, uh, I'd like to meet with her. Um, tentatively scheduled a meeting with her tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. and uh, if uh, things look good, I'll present at our next school committee meeting her credentials and see if we can uh, appoint our second uh, person. But tonight I wanted to discuss with the committee um, this letter from Sharon P. Grossman. Um, and I'd like to put a motion on the table that uh, we uh, appoint Ms. Grossman uh, to the Human Rights Commission. So Second. Um, Ms. Grossman, as, as many of you know, has been in town for, for over 30 years. Uh, she's been active in a variety of, of capacities, uh, uh, ranging from advocacy, um, No Place for Hate, Arlington Common Threads, 
to political campaigns and uh, school-related issues like PTO and high school selection committees. Um, in her professional life, she's a school psychologist, mm -hmm. and uh, she has a strong core belief that our community should be welcoming to tall and that bias and unfair treatment of any sort is wrong. I think Ms. Grossman would be the ideal uh, appointment uh, by our body. Um, so is there uh, okay. further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against? Okay. So if, uh, Karen, you want to get me, um, I'll get a letter to you. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. Monthly financial report. Uh, Ms. Johnson. Um, you have the reports. We are, we have completed the um, request for uh, purchase orders and they're all in the process of being processed. I was away at the beginning of April and came back to a formidable stack, but we are uh, churning through that. And I hope by the report at the beginning of May, I'll be able to update you with our year-end balances in light of the entry of all those POs. Any questions? Dr. Allison. Um, I had a question for page two of three, um, the power and electricity. Okay. I was just concerned that we're running 113,000 above budget and wondering why that is and also um, whether we've budgeted enough for next year with the Thompson coming online. Um, this is just the general fund portion of power and electricity. There are other places where power and electricity oh, okay. is paid. Okay, um, so it's being paid out of a different Right, chunk. and also okay. if you look at the line immediately below that, we're running significantly under a natural gas. So right. I think it will more than wash itself out without having to turn to those other funds. But we budget, we don't just budget in the general fund. Okay. So that there's other electricity budgeted in other parts of the budget. Okay. Such as where? Um, the building, um, the building rental fund, and we can also take some power money out of Pierce Field for the electric on the lights, um, if we choose to do so. Any other questions? Um, okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, update on Thompson rebuild. Dr. Bodie. Well, there's. Since the last time I reported, there, there are, we have not had another Thompson Building School Committee, um, Thompson School Building Committee meeting. However, since then, uh, members of the committee have visited Thompson, and I don't know if they would like to share some of their impressions at this point. That was awesome. I got, <laughs> I got my own private tour because no one else showed up yesterday, but um, it was a gorgeous day, um, so that was nice. and. Uh, they said it's it's kind of interesting. They said if you came every week now, you'd see there's huge changes because that's where they are in the building. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was just floored at kind of the whole flow of it, the, the way it flows, especially when you enter the building and kind of how you can see the whole mm -hmm. main floor from that entryway. I just mm -hmm. love that the way it's going to be all open and kind of glass. And um, I mean, I know that right now there's no glass, so it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to visualize it, but. Um, I don't know, it just it seems really cool and just the way they've thought through the space and the flow of it, you know, like the fact that there's two ways to get into the library, you know, so you can mm -hmm. kind of run through it and that there's all these different um, meeting spaces, like there's this place where the kids can sit um, in the middle of some of the floors, like in the middle, like I think it was the kindergarten first grade, there's like this stepped up thing that's built and that's going to also happen in the library, there's going to be like a reading area mm -hmm. so it just seems to me it's really been thought well thought out as to kind of how kids congregate and how you kind of want to teach them things um, mm -hmm. and I thought that was really cool I also of course stuck my head in the bathrooms um, mm -hmm. and wanted to look at the bathrooms because those were so horrendous at Thompson before <laughs> and uh, and I said hey there's no doors on the bathrooms and they're like yeah you know it's like the airport there you don't need them and there's there's no sense in having them because they only get in the way and pinch fingers and all that kind of stuff for little kids. And I thought, oh, that's a really mm -hmm. cool idea. So it's got that big kind of entryway, but you can't see beyond it, but you know, it's obvious one way is one way. So I thought, I just, I really think it's just really well thought out. You know, mm -hmm. I just feel like it's, and it's just a lot, some of the tile was up, not all of it, but I, you can get a real sense of how bright and, yeah. you know, just so bright, all those windows, it's so bright and wonderful in there. I, I think it'll just be so much fun to go to school there. <laughs> that is the most detailed report I've ever heard right down the <laughs> <laughs> That was really cool. 
The kitchen's starting to, you know, come together too, so that was cool. Just, you know, to see all that, knowing what the basement kitchen was like before. You know, it, it's so cool having the um, kind of the before and after. You know, going in and seeing, he's like, "You want to see the heating and water system?" I said, "Yes," because I, I have this picture in my mind of that old thing that we yeah, replaced. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and he's like, "Here it is," and I was like, "That's it." And he's mm -hmm. like, "Yeah." And there's a backup system. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool, and I don't know. It just it feels like. I mean, I just can't wait now. And he's like, well, you can come back, you know, come back in a couple of weeks. It'll look so much different because, mm -hmm. you know, every day the stuff gets added in there, you know, whether it's ceilings or flooring or whatever. So, mm -hmm. so it was really cool. So thank you so much for setting those up. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Well, they'll be toward the end of June go in. They'll just be amazing. Well, we, yeah. we will have occupancy after July 12th. So when you, I think that what you're going to see is exactly what Brian DeFilippo said, is that it's going to be major changes all the time. Because when we were there, I thought, wow, we're going to have three months left to this? And he said, really, the last month, it just falls, it just comes all together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you had mentioned that July 12th would be, mark the earliest, you know, occupancy date yes. of any recent building in the town. Correct. Mm -hmm. Pretty remarkable. Mr. Hanna. Between seeing the school and hearing the presentation tonight, the old man has a feeling he'd like to go back to teaching. <laughs> uh, so Especially many, there. Well, well, so many things are happening in education. and the, Like this building, it's changing so quickly for the better, I think. And it's really exciting to see what's happening. And uh, the other night with the technology night, watching the different levels from the, the elementary uh, kindergarten class all the way up to the high school and with this new building it's exciting uh, I can't speak directly to it but the, these little pieces of material that are just outside the windows mm -hmm. uh, they're oh, the awnings? Well, well I wouldn't even call Sunshine. them an awning because it, it's only going to come out about this far they are awnings is what they are but they're going to redirect sunshades. the light yes. S sunshades that's sunshades. what they are. and uh, the, the, everything <coughs> is so well thought out yeah. uh, that it's exciting uh, be great. I I've got to say, and I don't mean to be a doomsayer, but each one of the rooms is set up for 26 students, and I, I, I really would like the room set up for like 22, 23, but we, that's where we are. Uh, the, and each level, when we went in, the first level was just basic construction. By the time we got to the third level, the rooms were finished. They, they just needed furniture for the most part right. with, with some fine, fine touches, and, and you really got a sense and feel for the size of the rooms and stuff. So I, I, thank you. We have one of the Thompson te teachers here. I think you've already seen it. You've had a tour of it, too. And how are the teachers feeling about it, Siobhan? Oh, I mean, everyone's just really excited. We can't <laughs> wait to get in there. Um, you know, the overall question has been, uh, when are we going to be able to move in? When are we going to be able to start bringing our stuff over there? Um, and, you know, where is everything? We just want to know where we're going to be able to put everything, and we're already trying to visualize it. Mm -hmm. um, we've had meetings about what's been ordered for us, so now it's a matter of, you know, starting to pack up our rooms. There were a couple of teachers who already came in over vacation to start packing up their, um, their classrooms. So, yeah, I think everyone's chomping at the bit. <laughs> I also really love that there's no lockers. Yes. You know, there won't be any of that, I don't know, that clangy, I hate mm -hmm. that sound. You, mm -hmm. I teach in a middle school, I guess we have to have lockers, but I love the fact that they... They maintained cubbies in the classrooms. Yeah. And just, mm -hmm. you know, you don't ha it, it, I think it just adds a sense of warmth that there's not these mm -hmm. big metal lockers out in the hallway anywhere. I remember it was, it was my first couple of months on the committee, and we, went, we had the opportunity to go to Boston to, to listen to an architect specialist in school buildings. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I remember from that talk was the uh, new concept of having sort of hallways that aren't as... Mm -hmm exactly what you said like clingy and yeah. um, mm -hmm. industrial and um, more open space mm -hmm. for you know um, and I think that's what they created with 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 this mm -hmm. it was nice to see the way they were setting up the uh, kindergarten suite with that mm -hmm. couch in the middle and between the four classrooms yeah and going up to the third floor and looking at the rooms because you saw the cabinets coming in and all the amenities and the views from there it's yeah, just just that's yeah. You know, the th from the third floor, it, it's just going to be so beautiful looking out there. You could see up to Sims. You could see across to Cambridge and Somerville, depending on what, di what direction you are. And the fact is that the, because the building is K-12, 
caddy cord. Uh, yeah. it, it really makes it even that more interesting to be looking at over the rooftops of the homes in the neighborhood. It's, 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 people are just going to love being there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> That's great. Good report. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, superintendent's report. All right. Um, I just have a few things. Um, well, first of all, uh, thank you for the moment of silence. Uh, we had moments of silence at the middle school and the high school this week. And at the elementary schools, um, as I had said in my, my email to parents on Friday, that very much like the, the last time we had a, um, a, a similar situation with the tragedy in Newtown, we, from what we, what we knew intuitively, what we, what we had read, what the research had showed is that, is that the best thing to do is to have as normal a school day as possible. Not that you don't answer questions, and that did happen, um, but I've talked to all the principals and they all said that it went very, very smoothly. And, and a lot of credit to, um, to our teachers and staff that they were the, uh, um, the models that, that made that possible. So I, I want to thank them and um, <clears throat> say that I also want to thank all of the administrators who, who also were very much a part of this planning. Going on to, I, I want to, we had another honor for one of our music teachers, uh, Tino D'Agostino. And there is an organization in Boston called the Pirandello Lyceum. And this is an organization, it's a nonprofit organization that uh, tries to, it aims to encourage uh, a greater understanding and appreciate, appreciation of Italian culture. And every year they give awards to outstanding Ita uh, uh, Americans of Italian descent, and, at, and they also raise money for scholarships. And this year, um, Mr. D'Agostino, who you all know, um, received one of those honors. And so I want to congratulate him. It's a, in, in, this, com in the, this community, it's a very uh, prestigious award and um, I might say quite well deserved. I also want to, you to be aware of a program that we're going to be starting next year. Very soon this is going to be um, uh, advertised. It's, it's very close to being ready to go out. But since we've had a lot of discussion this year about Spanish immersion, program. We um, have not, because of budget issues, been able to fund that. Uh, I still see, see the possibility may, uh, may be there in the future. We're not ruling that out. But there is a tremendous interest and demand for this type of programming. And so we are going to begin an after-school uh, Spanish immersion program as a pilot next year for students in grades K and 1 at the Brackett School. And we decided upon the Brackett School, even though it's an, it's an all district program, it's that we still have long wait lists at Brackett uh, to get into the after school program. But as I said, this is a, an all district program and we have a set up in terms of a schedule so that there would be time for, for people to come from other schools to join in. Obviously, there'll be space limit, limitations to this program, um, but all of that will unfold over the, the next week. And I'll probably have the flyer for you on May 9th, but I wanted to mention it tonight so that parents are aware of this. I, I think that one of the things that we're seeing in Arlington increasingly is a demand for after-school care, as we have more uh, two-income families. Mm -hmm. and Unfortunately, the schools, many of the schools are not even able to provide for the demand that we are seeing at, at these schools. Mm -hmm. And in particular, at the Brackett School, we usually have wait lists. Um, so this is another, going to be another opportunity, and parents will have the, the option of having a two- or three-day program. And the program will go from after school till 6 p.m. So it really is an immersion opportunity. Um, and um, eventually, depending on how this program goes, how well it's received, um, we, we can expand into other grade levels. But right now, we're going to just start with K and 1. All right. 
Dr. Ampey? Mm -hmm. Will there be busing from other schools besides Brackett? Unfortunately, no. Um, there would not be busing. We don't have a busing program now. On the other hand, we do have a bus for Bishop, and I don't want to commit right now uh, to say that that might be a possibility. It, it really depends on what right. on the, the route and the schedule next year. But um, I'm hoping if there are people at a particular school, they, they can arrange some kind of carpooling, um, carpooling up to bracket. And how many slots are there? Um, I think that we are going to have two classrooms. We've already worked with teachers um, that have been willing to have the program in their, in their rooms, because that was certainly a key, uh, a key necessity before we could move forward. Um, I, I, I want to say 20, and I think that is the number, but I think there's some flexibility around that number right now. And it's how many, it's how, how many hours a day and how many days a week? Parents can have a two or a three day option. And it starts right after school, though there's a, and it can go to six o'clock. We're building in a couple of time periods where there's a transition time mm -hmm. and parents can pick up at those transition times. We don't want to just have um, pickups throughout the entire afternoon. But um, there will be a time for snacks and, and before the actual program starts so that parents that are carpooling or bringing their children from another school uh, will, have a, will not miss anything. And you're, promote, you're starting to pr promote this? And Are we going to promote it? Oh, yeah. definitely going to promote it. I, I wanted to, to touch base. I did touch base with Donna Itson, who is our, um, our director of our community ed program, which is part of the Arlington Public Schools. So this is an Arlington, even though we're having a vendor, GoLingo, which has been um, very well received with our after school language programs. Um, and, and they have, they have done uh, similar programs elsewhere, but this is, um, they're, very, they're very happy to be working with us. They have, I have to tell you, they have made a point of telling me how much they have enjoyed working with Arlington children. Mm -hmm. um, totally unsolicited. So they're very happy that, that uh, we're interested in doing this. So this, all of this will be out uh, in the next couple of weeks, but I know parents start thinking about this. I've already ha actually, I've already had a couple of emails um, asking where we were on this program. So we're, we're moving forward. Mr. Hannon. How is this funded? Tuition. It, the, it will be very similar to any after school program. Uh, the price will be fairly comparable. Thank you. Will GoLingo still be uh, operating in, in the other schools that yes. they were? The, the other programs will still continue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It'll be great. And one last thing. Again, the Arlington Community Education is a part of the Arlington Public Schools, and one of the um, innovative things that we've been doing this year for adults and, and also for high school students is to have um, speakers come in. And we had one just recently, which was, I went to, was terrific, the Lincoln's Tragic Pragmatism, but we have another author coming um, on Tuesday, May 7th, at 7, from 7.30 to 9 in the High School Media Center. This is Margaret Fuller. Um, an, it's, an, it's a biography of Margaret Fuller, A New American Life, and the biographer is Megan Marshall, who will be here to discuss her book. So hopefully, um, we, there was a large crowd for the last program, and hopefully that, um, that uh, people will be enticed to come to this as well. And that's it. Great, thank you. It's subcommittee reports, policies and procedures. We need to schedule a meeting to start revising CBI, but we have not done that yet. Okay. Budget. Uh, we have nothing to report. Community relations, I think that's. Leba, right? Leba, yeah. yeah. Uh, curriculum instruction assessment? Nothing to report. Facilities. Nothing to report. Okay. Legal services. I know. I don't know if we reformed legal services. I'm we sorry. were discussing that last time. I think that we stay in effect through the end of the school year, <laughs> till we make Did a we? report. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I thought I think that we, it was okay. We still exist, um, Chair. There's nothing uh, for for me to report. Um, consent agenda. Um, 
All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Motion to approve approval uh, warrant uh, 13147 dated April 11, 2013. Total warrant amount $396,156.49. Minutes of approval, regular minutes March 14th and March 28th, 2013. And approval of Jazz Band Italy and Switzerland Music Tour 2014. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? Passes. Secretary's report. All right. Uh, over the last two weeks, we've received the following correspondence. The Town of Arlington Fiscal Year 2014 Town Manager's Annual Budget and Financial Plan. A copy of the Arlington Public Schools report to town meeting in fiscal year 2014 budget summary. A flyer from Community Education on the great conversations that uh, the superintendent just told us about. Uh, the 2013-2014 list of Arlington School Committee members and our appointments. A letter from Chairman Judson Pierce to town meeting members uh, introducing the book for town meeting. A letter from Evelyn Smith DeMille to Kathleen Bodie informing her of the APS receiving $34,000 in funding from the Sanborn Foundation for the Arlington Public Schools 2013-2014 Anti-Tobacco Education, and a letter back from Kathleen Bodie to Evelyn smith DeMell thanking her for the good news on receiving the Sanborn Grant. Mass Equity School Committee Survey, a copy and request to take it online, a proposal for the Jazz Band Italy and Switzerland Music Tour 2014 that we just approved, the April 2013 monthly tracking reports from CFO, a uh, letter and resume from Sharon Grossman to Judson Pierce and Adam Chaplain in application for one of our two vacancies on the Arlington Human Rights Commission, and responses to the budget questions raised by Mr. Hainer from Diane Fisk. Thank you. All right, I'd like to uh, make a motion to go into executive section, conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel, or contract negotiations with union and or non-union in which if held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect. To conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation in which if been held in open meeting may have a detrimental effect. Collective bargaining may also be conducted uh, only uh, to come out for the purposes of going into a retreat to discuss uh, our district goals for the 2013-2014 year. Second. All right. All those in favor? Uh, Rocco? Aye. 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 Okay. It will be an executive session. Thank you. Wow. Good. Wow. I'm going to stand it. <laughs>